I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking to two gentlemen, Mike and Elias. I think I said that correct, did I, Elias? And uh, I want you to tell me a little bit about the background of what I know now I see as the Sun Dancer, but this looks a lot like a Lombada to me. Is there a relationship? Uh, yes, it is. Actually, the, the uh, Lombada uh, was uh, redesigned, and the redesign that you're looking at is the Sun Dancer. And um, it's, a, it's a great... Um, addition to the to the uh, aviation community we've got a completely different uh, tail structure the uh, lamination layup is different and uh, it's a, it's a much better aircraft uh, lombadas are good but the sun dancer is now something new and much better now your role with the company elias well i'm the production manager at the star we manufacture sun dancer right behind us and samba Okay, and uh, tell me what, uh, give me just a few pieces of what was different when you redesigned from Lombada to Sundancer, Elias. Well, as Mike said, it's got completely new tail, and what we uh, also use right now is a polyurethane paint. And that was not true on the Lombada? That was not. Okay, otherwise, it appears to have the same basic plan form and cockpit layout and things like that. Am I right about that? And those things are all the same. There's some aerodynamic changes that are very subtle you wouldn't be able to notice unless I pointed them out. But in general, if you look at this one and you look at a Lombada, you're going to think you're looking at the same aircraft. Okay, now, I'm an old soaring pilot. Hang gliders and some sailplanes and things that go up in the air because the air is going up. I like that. A lot of people do. And motor gliders have a special place, which is what I would call this, because they can launch themselves. You don't have to be towed aloft. You don't have to be uh, winch towed or any of the other means that are generally used to get a sailplane or even a hang glider up in the air. Why would someone be interested in this if they weren't a soaring pilot? Well, I think to, to note that Elias and I flew this out from California. Uh, although it's only 2,500 nautical miles, we we, we did it in 3,000. I took him uh, through the Rockies and then back through the Grand Canyon and Monument Valley. So we had quite a quite a good time. So as a glider, uh, as a motor glider or a touring motor glider, the Sundancer offers you the best of both worlds. We flew this like an airplane with two people and 100 pounds of baggage and we averaged about 110 knots coming cross country. In about two minutes we can swap out the wingtips, add another eight feet, that give us a 30 to 1 glide ratio. The prop is full feathering. My best flight in this about 250 miles and I've been up to 20,000 feet as a glider with it. So it's quite versatile and uh, it gives you the best of both worlds. Now what is the span of this current one as we see it here in what I might call your cruising mode then? A cruising mode like this is 42 feet or about 13, 13 and a half meters. Okay and you can increase that all the way out to 50 feet is that right? That's correct yes and takes as I said only takes about a minute aside to switch out a tip. It's a tip plug-in you pull out the old you put in the new secure it by some means. Exactly. Okay very good. Very now that's a long flight you just had here 3,000 miles 5,000 kilometers mountains everything else. I've been to Czech Republic, it's a beautiful country, and it seemed pretty big when I was there, but it's a lot smaller than this. How was that to fly across this big country, Alias? It was a great fun. My, Mike took me to all those uh, famous places. We didn't only like cruise to Florida, we had some, fl some fun flying in Monument Valley, Grand Canyon, and uh, Yosemite Valley. It was amazing. I mean, the nature and uh, the landscape that you have here, on such a big land, it's amazing. It is quite a, and those places you just mentioned, that you'd be the envy of many Americans, not all of whom have seen that, because it is a big country and it's hard to go everywhere and see everything. Um, but you did some soaring along the way too, I'm just guessing, right? We shut down just for a short period. The weather, to be honest with you, wasn't really going to cooperate. We couldn't even find Wave. The last time I, I contacted Wave in Albuquerque and had a little bit of fun before I got here for Sun and Fun. But this trip was pretty much just straight flying. We do have a, a video clip that you should see of us in the Rockies, uh, plane to plane. It's quite well, I, amazing. I hope you'll tell me about that and we'll add that into this video. But uh, when you said Rocky Mountains, I right away thought about wave, but a lot of people don't know what wave is. If you're not a soaring pilot, what is a wave? Well, essentially what you've got is a jet stream comes down, bounces against the mountain ridge, and creates an oscillation within the atmosphere. And with a glider, or a glider pilot as you know, we go ahead and, and use that oscillation and we ride it just uh, just like you would body surf, I guess would be the best way to put it. And we use our gliders to go ahead and climb up. The world record right now I think is at about 70,000 feet down in Peru and they're looking to go to 90. Yeah, think about that folks. 
90,000 feet without an engine. No engines, well, it may be an engine on it, but that's shut down and you're saving lots and lots of gas and you're going nowhere fast, but you're having a ball. I'm looking here at these speed brakes on the top of the wing. Why do people have speed brakes on this? In fact, they may, some people don't even know that that's what it is, but why is that there? Well, it is there to, uh, if you, to, to kill your lift, actually. When you, to uh, kill lift. Now, most people go, no, no, we want lift, don't we? No, when you land and w when you seem to be too long, you want to kill the lift <laughs> and especially with something with big span like this what is the glide in its current configuration the cruise configuration i'm calling it what is the glide angle on this in a, in a 42 feet configuration it's uh 26 to 1 and when you put the long extension on it's 30 to 1. 30 to 1. now there are some sailplanes that even go way up past 50 to 1 which is an amazing thing but folks if you go plot on take a piece of paper and plot on a graph if you do a one-to-one -one, that's a 45 degree angle and then if you just keep making those lines narrower and narrower when you get to 26 to 1 it's virtually a horizontal line is it not very very much so yes it's like you you, you get to you get to fly uh, uh, 26 meters and you you just fall uh, drop by one meter one meter yeah so so really that's quite an amazing thing come on back into the picture here Mike and what I want to ask now is I want you to kind of walk me through the process you're up flying along let's say it's a great soaring day let's just say it's thermals not wave uh, thermals are just uh, columns of air spiraling spiraling around and going up as they do many people are aware of them from dust devils or other things all the same phenomenon but you're flying along and you spot some great soaring weather ahead of you by whatever means you use to spot that walk me quickly through the process of what you do to prepare the airplane to go from being an airplane to a glider well it's, it's quite simple actually you go ahead and throttle back uh, you begin to shut down all of your breakers. The Rotax is water-cooled. You don't have to worry about shock cooling at all. And uh, as you approach the lift, uh, you've got your Vario is the only thing that's going to be left on. You're going to look at the Vario, and as soon as the lift starts to spike, you go ahead and just shut the engine off. And then uh, very simply reach down, and you have a prop feathering lever. You pull that back, and it brings the prop back into full feather. And uh, if you want to put in a little bit of flap, which helps to reduce the radius of your turn, you go ahead and start thermaling and enjoy yourself. The thermals can take you, uh, you know, up to, I've been up to 22,000 feet in a thermal, so uh, it's quite amazing and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's quite eerie, actually, what, you're, what you perceive. I know from my own experiences, you don't sense that you're rising, you sense that the earth is dropping. Yeah, it's very silent, very smooth, usually. You're in the core of the thermal, so what power pilots think of as, as turbulence, I look at as, as a breath of, of life. It's going to lift me up and give me that ability to, to continue to go cross country. So thermals are our friends when we're shut down. It's a lot of fun. One of my old lines has been, one man's bump is another man's thermal. <laughs> because really, when you're flying in your power plane, you're doing 200 knots, which is pretty quick, and you hit a thermal, you're going to go boom just like that and it's gonna feel like a bump and something you don't want and your passengers goes "Ooh, I don't like that the, but some of us want to go wait a minute I want to turn in that thing and go up right Exactly. Yeah, we're gonna pull back on the stick as fast as we can and begin a real steep banking turn to core that thermal and get as much lift as we can now you, you do that with somebody who's long and knows that's what you're gonna do though oh, yeah you, I don't do that with my wife <laughs> at all <laughs> Well, I want to ask you now a little bit more. Uh, so Lombada, that was a few years ago. Then Sundancer came back, and thanks for bringing it back, and thanks for keeping it going in the meantime. But tell me today about uh, availability of the airplane. If I say, gosh, I, I've been looking for a good motor glider. I want one. I haven't found anything else that satisfies me. How long to get one? Uh, we don't talk about price, but, you know, get me in the ballpark of, you know, just how much is it? How, do, how does it compare to a fixed wing? Give me some of the purchase considerations that you would tell someone who said, I'm interested to tell me more well we sell them fully equipped uh, it's just simpler that way uh, you're going to get your complete flat panel ballistic chute cabin heat tinted canopy be set up uh, for uh, uh, with nav lights a landing light uh, polyurethane paint and uh, three sets of wing tips and, and all of that's going to run you delivered with 10 hours of instruction and everything. You're going to be looking at about $138,000 right now 
and, and everything we do is complete. Uh, that's shipping, registration with the FAA, and 10 hours of instruction. And sometimes my 10 hours turns into 30 hours, and it just depends on your skills. I want you to have fun, I want you to be safe, and I want you to enjoy your, your Sundancer. Where are you located in California, Mike? Well, just outside the gates of Yosemite. So that's why I have such a good soaring experience because I can take my Sundancer out of the hangar and in 30 minutes I can be on the crest of the Sierra Nevada mountains in world-class soaring conditions, shut down, and I can run the Owens Valley or cross over to the Whites. It's, I'm quite spoiled, to be honest with you, but it's a beautiful place to live and, and uh, as, as a soaring pilot, it, it's a great place to be. All right, let's have a website address, so uh, we'll put it up on the screen. Just tell me what it is and uh, where people can go to learn more about Sundancer or Samba or D-Star. It's uh, either www.flysundancer.com or www.flysamba.com. We didn't do Samba earlier, but that's S-A-M-B-A, correct? S-A-M-B-A. Okay. You can find more about uh, all kinds of aircraft in this space, all the affordable aviation you want to learn more about on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Mike, Elias, and myself here at the booth space at DeLand 2019.